Cockrell. Um, if you'd like to ask a question, please raise your hand. Sarah, we'll come to you first. Thank you. Thanks ever so much. Uh, Richard, could we just start with uh, an injury update and where the squad are this morning? Any problems, niggles, joiners? No, everybody trained fully and everybody's uh, ready to go. Lovely. Uh, what's it like having a Friday morning uh, without a positive COVID test? Yeah, it makes um, life a lot a lot easier. So, no, we're, uh, we've had a good training week. Everybody's uh, fit and healthy uh, that should be and looking forward to, to obviously towards the game tomorrow. And how is Joe Marler looking uh, from a forward point of view coming into this test, having had all that isolation? Yeah, he trained with us this morning. He's uh, as uh, lively as he's as he always is. So no, he's uh, he's in good spirits, um, physically very good, and um, obviously very glad to have his experience in the squad. And lastly, from me, how does the experience of you preparing a side to take on that South African uh, pack? Where does that sort of uh, weigh in your uh, list of jobs that you've done over the years? Oh, look, it's a huge challenge for for, for us. They're they're clearly. Um, one of the best packs, if not the best pack in the world at the moment. Um, and we've got a real challenge to, to compete with that. So look, we know um, we, we have a good plan going into the game. We know the strengths they're going to bring. And, um, you know, we've got a couple of guys in that front row that um, it'll be their first experience of playing against that quality. But uh, we're very confident that they'll, they'll stand up to the, to the job. And we, we look forward to, to seeing how that, how that goes. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Sarah. Um, Andrew McKenna, please. Uh, Richard, we all know that sports teams are better when they have their backs against the wall so they can create that us against the world mentality. Does the situation with Razzie make South Africa even more dangerous this week? Oh, I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm the right person to answer that. Look, they, they'll have their own motivations. Um, obviously, what's gone on around uh, Razzie and, and you know other things that have happened in the last few few days regarding uh, the South African camp so look we're, we're just concentrating on ourselves we can only control what we can how we we perform and what we can do look they'll be motivated they're they're the best team they're world champions and they're, they're ranked first in the world so I'm sure they'll want to have the motivation of finishing their tour um, on a high note and uh, we know we've got a big job ahead of us um, physically, um, especially around the set piece, um, and we look forward to it. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be as motivated as them, um, for sure, and we look forward to the challenge. On the challenge, how much of a gamble is it going into an international game against South Africa with the loose head who's only had one training session this week? You mean in Joe? Yeah. Look, Joe's got a huge amount of experience. Um, and uh, he knows how to play the game. And as we saw with Quinns at the end of the year, he he uh, he's, he can turn up and do, and play eighty minutes and do a job. So we've no qualms with Joe coming in and being in the twenty three. And uh, we know he's going to have a big a uh, big say in what happens on Saturday. And just one final one, Richard. Obviously, in the last few weeks, we've seen you go through uh, four different loose heads. We've seen obviously hookers missing out on this autumn because of injuries. Everyone talks about the South Africans and their strength in depth of their front rows. How far behind are England from being able to put out two front rows that are almost indistinguishable from each other? Oh, I think I think if we have two, we have everybody fit. We we have that that depth to, to be able to do that. Obviously, circumstance at this point um, doesn't allow us to do that. But what it does do is give opportunity for us to create experience and depth with some with some younger players like Bevan Rod. Um, playing his second test, he's going to find out what it's what it's like tomorrow to play against you know one of the best front rows in the world, and we're confident that he will he will cope with that. Um, same with Jamie Blamire, um, young player, and we're, we're we're building towards the World Cup in two years' time. So these types of experiences, um, the only way to get experience is to do it. We've all been as players, we've all wait, we've all been in our first or second tests against big teams, and you have to see what it feels like and you have to front up and you have to cope with the with the with the with the pressure and the physicality that comes with that. Cheers Richard. Thank you. Thanks Andrew. Ben Ransom please. Thank you very much. Um, Richard, we know that Eddie always likes to fire a few shots over the bowels ahead of a game. He's yeah. promising this week to show South Africa that your pack isn't weak. I mean now you're part of that coaching staff on the inner sanctum. Do you raise a rice smile when you hear comments like that? Oh, Ed, Ed is Eddie, and he, he drives the environment how he wants to drive it. So look, um, yeah, I I agree with his comments. You know, there's 
South Africa think we're we're weak. Well, that's fine. That's up to them what they say about that. We've just got our, you know, we've got we've got to do our job that we've prepared to do. So, like I say, look, you know, I've played for England. You know, you've all had your first test, or you've all all, all had your first um, game where you you got to be up against experienced players, and you have to then go into that um, well prepared, great mindset that we're going to take them on and. We're going to match them physically and, and and see where we get to. So, look, I've every confidence in Jamie Blamar, every confidence in Bevin Rod. Um, you know, Bevin came in at last last minute last week, started against Australia, um, played 70 minutes in a brilliant job. So, um, the only way to get experience is to do it. And uh, we've got two young guys that are going to learn a lot tomorrow. But we, we're very confident that they'll they'll compete and do a great job. Um, and it's for us to do, it's for us to prove that we can cope with that pressure and that physicality. And we're certainly, that's a, certainly our aim to do that. You're obviously in the process of building something. You've seen what South Africa have got in front of you this weekend. Is it the case, do you think, that to win a World Cup, you have to have the best pack in the world? I think it certainly helps. And I think it's, it's something that we, as an England group, will, will look forward to, to building in the next two years. So, um, South Africa have got you know a huge amount of caps in that side that, that we're playing tomorrow, almost double uh, the, the amount of caps that we have on the field. So um, we're, we're they've got a very experienced team that's very settled. Um, we're we're a team that is developing and we're building. And there's been no secret from Eddie that we're we're building towards the next World Cup to to go there and try and win the World Cup. So there is a process in that, and young guys uh, will get experience and get their opportunity on the way. And um, We'll see how we how we deal with that tomorrow. Um, so certainly those two young front rowers have got a big job on their hands. But as I say, they're well prepared, uh, and we, they're looking forward to to getting into the game. And we're looking forward to to seeing how they play. We we would pick them if we if we thought that we, they couldn't cope with the challenge ahead. Thanks, Richard. Cheers. Thanks, Ben. Um, we'll come to Nick Mullins, and then we'll finish with Gavin Mayers. Thank you, Nick. Please. Thanks, thanks, Catherine. Uh, morning, Richard Hayding. I'm good, mate. Yourself. Yeah, very well, thank you. Um, it was interesting to see South Africa change their entire front row a minute before half time last Saturday. What, what, why would they have done that, do you think? Oh, you, you'll have to ask them that, Nick. I mean, look, they've got clearly they've got two very good front rows and they have a strategy to, to how they want to play. Um, uh, so, so that there's that there's not much difference is that when they when they change their front rows maybe they were disappointed with something in in the game that they wanted to do that so I, I'm not sure but uh, whoever they start or whoever they bring on there's not as we've spoken about there's not a lot of differences are in quality. It's interesting that they do it a minute before half time though, isn't it? I mean, are they making some kind of why would you do that if you were coaching it? <laughs> probably, South Africa with a team like that. Probably, to, probably to make a point to the guys that started. Probably to fire a bullet across their bow. I'm not sure. You'll, you'll have you'll have to ask them. All right, cool. Uh, 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 do you go in for the changing one, two, and three at the same time? Oh, look, that'll be game dependent. Um, so for us, we'll we'll see how the game is is uh, is is evolving in front of us and. If we need to make change, we'll make change. If we feel that that's right, if if not, then you know Eddie Eddie will decide at the time where, what we th feel is right for the game. Um, we know it's going to be a very physical contest, and it's we, we've got to make sure that we stay in the physical battle the whole time. And one last one from me: what what does South Africa do specifically on the engagement that makes them such a such a handful? That initial impact? Oh, they put a lot of weight across on the bind, and they always try and get they always try and hit and and, and slightly chase through the the engagement um a little bit early um but um you know we're very confident that that'll be uh you know it'll be uh, the officials are on top of that and know what they're looking at and um and also we have to match that as well so if you know at some point the officials uh, can't control everything and as a, as a front five we have to make sure that we control um the things that we want to want to do against them as well Great. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. And we'll finish with Gavin. Thank you. Hi, Richard. Hi, man. Um, yeah, I'm just, just, just interested in your take on on South Africa's kind of status in world rugby. Um, I suppose for years we've always looked to the All Blacks to be the sort of standard bearers and and the side that 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 countries tested themselves against. Do you think South Africa occupy that position at the minute, given where they are, given their kind of I don't know experience? physical profiles, the fact of world champion, just be interested to see what you think. 
Oh, look, they, they play how they want to play and they make no apologies for it and it's successful. They're world champions and um, they, they, win, they win most games that they play, don't they? So, um, look, they've got, a, they've got a very experienced forward pack that's, that's um, very well drilled. Um, they play how they play. You know, 80 plus percent of their line outs are driven um, and they get a lot of success from that, from penalties and then march teams up the field. So, um, I think it's very much the, the, the most physical test you're going to come across at, uh, at test match level. Other teams uh, are physical and fast, but, it, but play differently. The South Africans, you know, they make no apologies of how they're going to play. Um, they don't change that that uh, game plan very often or at all. Um, and they just um, almost put down the gauntlet of, um, well, we're going to do this. Are you good enough to stop us? So um, I and they win games. Test matches are about winning games and they win games. So I've got no uh, qualms about how they play. Um, fair play to them that they stick to what they, they do very well. And it's a very part of their South African DNA, which I respect. Um, now it's it's a great challenge for us to, to tomorrow to go and match what they throw at us physically and play play a game that, that suits this team to win the game. And, and given that, Richard, does that, I, I don't know, do they provide the kind of the ultimate test at the minute internationally until given that this England team's trying to, you know, go in a new direction, rebuild a little bit, the fact that what you've just said there, does that make them the sort of, I don't know, the ultimate challenge at the minute? Oh, I, I think so. Physically, certainly. Physically, from a scrum and set piece and line out point of view, there isn't a harder team to play against in the world at the moment. Um, so that's the challenge for us tomorrow. And um, I, I don't think it will be one that will... Uh, will shy away from. We, we're looking forward to get to going um, uh, into battle against South Africa tomorrow. Um, you know, we'll fire our own bullets and play how we want to play. Um, but certainly there are always points in the game where you have to match the opposition physically because they're going to have their own line out. They're going to have their own scrum put in and we're going to have to deal with that, that physical challenge. And yeah, we're looking forward to it. Why wouldn't you? You know, those, there's a couple of young guys in that front row that are relishing the opportunity to see how, how, how good they are and how they how they compete at this level. Um, we've got a forward pack that will look forward to, to competing tomorrow. And um, uh, you know, if they think we have a weakness there, that's up to them, but we certainly don't. Thanks, Rick. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. We'll end the live section with Richard there. We'll have Joe in with you shortly. Thanks, Richard. Cheers.